Welcome back to Block TV. I'm Ron Friedman, and it's time for Hodel with Hedel. It's a chance for us uh, to break away from the uh, daily news and take a wider perspective on some of the big issues uh, that are dominate the crypto space as a whole. And to guide us on this journey of discovery, we're joined by early Bitcoiner and thought leader Dan Held, Director of Business Development at Kraken. Dan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, as usual. All right. Well, uh, uh, today we've got a bit of a juicy uh, uh, topic. We're talking hardcore, hardcore hodling. Um, for those of us uh, uh, not uh, 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 aware of the of the parlance, what are we talking about? We're talking about cold, cold, cold storage, right? Yeah. This is this is your cold, cold, cold storage. The kind of nuclear uh, Bitcoin storage, or how do you how do you manage your private keys? despite natural disasters, despite governments, despite everything else. And uh, I felt like it'd be really fun to kind of explore this topic today and go really deep into how do you hardcore hodl? So, so we're talking about uh, low tech as pretty much as low as you can go, right? In most cases, uh, but because of that, it's simple, it's very durable, uh, it's, good, it's supposed to keep you safe. Uh, but, but let's go into the concept a bit. Uh, we're talking about hardcore hodling, uh, uh, give me some examples. Yeah, so you know, with you know, with hodling, with managing your private key, complexity is a pro and a con. So ultimately, you want systems that will survive very, very uh, long periods of time. And so, if it's only electronic, there might be some issues with that. For example, there's something called bit rot, where you know you might be familiar with this if you pulled out your old VCR. For those who are old enough to remember VHS tapes, yeah. if you pull out your old v, you know, <laughs> VCR, you're, you're, it's not likely that it's going to turn on once you plug it in. And so the, what that's called is bit rot. Uh, same with like your old VHS tapes or your old CDs. Mm -hmm. They degrade over time. And so with hodling for a very long period of time through potential natural disasters and other issues, you know, having to be very durable is kind of the key. And so. The two methods that I'm going to show today, both are built for durability. Yeah, we're, and we're talking about time frames of, you know, 20, 30, 50 more years. You know, this is stuff uh, you, you can leave it for your for your grandchildren and uh, and trust that it's uh, going to keep on working. Exactly. Yeah, these should all be really durable. Of course, the first and foremost uh, component of this is being secure, uh, but being durable, I think, is kind of the highlight here. I've been in the crypto space for seven years and seen, <laughs> seen a lot of people lose a lot of money through uh, not not kind of thinking through this properly. All right. So if I'm uh, if I'm a hodler, what's the what's the best uh, uh, tools or what's the best uh, measures I can take? Yeah. So the first method we're going to look at today is the classic hardware method. So the hardware method typically consists of your ledger or a trezor. Right. And these are your two physical devices that store your private key. And what's awesome about these is that these aren't connected to the internet necessarily. They're disconnected. There's no Wi-Fi. Uh, they're very, very basic uh, pieces of hardware. And so these are the two most popular hardware wallets out there. But I'd they've recommend... got electronic uh, components and there's, they might be subject to, to the rot you were talking about. That's right. They, they might be subject to bit rot and if there's like an EMP explosion, which is a electromagnetic explosion from certain types of like nuclear detonations or other things, you're going to want one of these, which is a Faraday bag. And this one's from Casa. And what you do with this is you open it up and inside of here, you take your treasure or ledger and you put it in there. All right. Adds another layer of protection. Yeah, it protects against uh, electromagnetic interference. It protects against electromagnetic attacks. So if anyone's trying to build a device to try to pull data off of your Trezor ledger, this will protect against that. Now, is this, a, is this a, a credible threat? I mean, these are things that uh, um, exist or, or that you know people are working on? I mean, we are talking about hardcore hodling here. We've got to be uh, extra paranoid about all the different ways that we could be attacked. I think you know there's decent chance for elect you know electrical interference okay uh, for example if someone walks by with a magnet or something else that could wipe your device um, so there's there's all sorts of issues to where you're going to want to seal this hardware device in as secure a way as possible 
and you might as well put this inside of a sleeve called the Faraday bag that enables it to be protected against external signals. So it's a, it's a very rare attack, but if you're hodling for a long period of time, you got to be extra secure. Right, and who knows uh, uh, what threats are going to be, uh, uh, be more available and more prevalent uh, in the coming years. All right, let's take it up a notch. What else you got? All right, so if you, got, if you want to get really, really hardcore, you got to go with the titanium backup. You got to I'll show have you it. what that looks like. Yeah, so this is, this is from CryptoTag, and it's a titanium backup. And so what a backup means is when you set up your Trezor or Ledger, there's a 12 to 24 word mnemonic is what they call it. That's also called your backup. So that backup can restore your Bitcoin wallet. And the way this works is we slide off the two ends. And as you can see here, you've got a bunch of slots for words. And what that does is you can write down your 12 to 24 word mnemonic on each, each plate. So you could have uh, two separate wallets and then you put these together you slide on the edges. And this is uh, made to withstand incredible amounts of stress. So with the crypto tag, they have stress tests, which will show that show it essentially being uh, destroyed in every way possible. Uh, so titanium has the highest melting point out of many other metals that are reasonably affordable. And so what's cool is that this can withstand immense amounts of heat. So if there's a, it depends on the intensity of the house fire, but it, it should survive many different types of uh, burning scenarios. It's crush proof, it's waterproof, it's shock proof. Uh, they've taken big, big steel presses, uh, ones that are made to bend metal and, and build it into different types of machinery. And they've taken that and they've hammered these uh, they've run this over with cars. They've shot this with guns. Um, it's virtually indestructible. What about so acid? We, what about acid, Dan? Acid? I think they might have an acid bath one. In fact, in our conversation with uh, Jeremy Welch a little bit later, uh, Jason uh, Jameson Lop did a test with some of these backups. So Jameson's done this, sort of the same scenario and. These, these are particularly uh, valuable out of all the types of backups because you, you hammer in the different phrases on here. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the other ones contain little letters and you don't wanna buy those because if that device gets crushed, the little letters can become loose. Instead, these are hammered in. I'll show you how that's, how that's done here. So this is the case it comes with, and you've got your hammer here. You see, there we go. Yeah. Your hammer here, and then you've got your letters here, or over there, yeah. And okay, so you this hammer is, this in. is uh, uh, medieval style, uh, uh, <laughs> old, 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 old school uh, uh, type of machinery, but uh, uh, does the work. Now, uh, um, you, you actually um, put this uh, to the stress test. Uh, let's take a look at that. Cool. Impressive stuff. 
Um, now, so all we've talked about so far is uh, one approach to uh, hardcore hodling. Uh, you had a chance to speak to uh, Jeremy Wallace uh, of Kaza about another method, right? Yeah, so the other method is a little bit more modern. So it's called multi-sig, and with multi-sig, you don't have to trust any one individual with your private key. You trust yourself, you trust Casa, and you trust a few other people that you give that private key to. So with multi-sig, it takes, for example, two out of three keys to move your coins, or three out of five keys, depending on the level of service that you buy at, at Casa. And so that's really cool because it's a system that I think is elegantly chooses a, a nice user experience between single key management, which is either trusting an exchange or doing what I just showed you, which is taking a treasure or ledger and then generating that private key and then taking that mnemonic and backing it up on that titanium. It's kind of an elegant go between between that and, um, you know, something a little bit more user friendly. Because if I lose that, that, uh, you know, if I lose one of these, you know, like my treasure or my ledger, and then I lose my backup, all my coins are gone for forever. So CASA makes it a little bit easier to not be so uh, stringent on the rules of managing your own private key. You can lose a key or two, depending on your setup, you can lose a key or two and still be all right. All right, let's take a look uh, uh, at that interview. We'll pick up after that. Hey, Jeremy, thanks for hopping on Hoddle with Heddle. And today we're going to talk about hardcore hodling. So how to hodl those private keys as hard as you possibly can. Awesome. And I know you, you guys think about that a lot over at Casa. We and do. Would love to you know, get the download from you on how you all approach that, how you all think about that, and how exactly Casa kind of delivers that hardcore hodling experience. Sure. Well, thanks for having me on, Dan. Um, so at Casa, we, our approach... Uh, we have a system, the key master system, which we describe as uh, you know, multi-device, multi-location, multi-sig. And each of those components, uh, you know, I, I, the combination of those components and each of those components mitigates a series of threats that we've outlined. Uh, we just recently released a kind of full overview of our security model that we call the Wealth Security Protocol. You can Google that, just CASA Wealth Security Protocol, and you can download that, read it. It's like a 40-page document. It goes into a lot of detail. I'm not going to cover all that today, uh, but we do identify around 13 threats that we're trying to mitigate against. Uh, those include just kind of data and credential loss. So if you just you know, you lost access to one key, having multi-sig, enable, we enable you to rotate in other keys. We have a three of five systems. So you can lose up to two keys and still recover your funds. Uh, there's phishing. There's SIM hijacking. There's network attacks. There's malware. There's physical coercion. Uh, there's even kind of internal service provider attacks. We actually do a lot of things at the company to, to limit internal data, uh, limit even the data we have on customers to mitigate any kind of attacks that can happen from uh, employees. Uh, and when you're dealing with you know, large amounts of Bitcoin, large amounts of money, large amounts of wealth, there are going to be these increasing incentives for attacks to happen. Uh, you know, all attacks are just a function of kind of cost benefit analysis for the fee for the attacker. And what our goal is, is to give, you know, ideal usability, excellent usability to in, in customers uh, with Keymaster and with the service. It, you know, we do pair a service element where you have a 24-7 uh, uh, um, account manager directly on your account. And they can also call in our engineers if there's something that's a kind of more technical issue. So you have direct access to Jamison Lop and to any of our other engineers uh, to help with your problem. We combine that again with this software to help mitigate these 13 major issues that we've identified around uh, managing your funds and give you the most control, the most security. And ultimately, we just, you know, we, we describe it as peace of mind for digital wealth. Um, so that's Keymaster. That's what we've built uh, there. We do have a separate product that's a node, but the main thing that we built uh, Casa for and Casa around is around this securing large amounts of Bitcoin and managing those keys yourself. And I've heard the most premium tier, you'll, uh, you know, Jameson Lop will helicopter in to uh, fight off people trying to get to your private <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll bring in his full arsenal. Um, uh, we, don't, we don't quite have the, uh, the helicopter mode, uh, but we actually do have, we have a push button that's a, uh, an emergency lockdown mode. And because we have, you know, the way the system is built is you still have access to your funds, even if we were to go down. So you have um, a, a, full, uh, a full instruction set and all the pub keys, so you don't have to come to us. We're ne you're never locked into a system. 
But with that, we've actually built this, this system that we call, a, or, a, or a button that's called emergency lockdown. And when you hit that, it does lock down your account. It also sends us an email. And for certain clients, they've requested that we do, we take certain actions for them, whether that's an email or a phone call to some certain person. And we basically give a very short message. So in the case of a real attack, you know, we can notify other friends, other security people that, you know, our, our kind of high net worth um, hodlers may have. Uh, and so we do have, we do have some extra features like that, um, that do again, kind of bring peace of mind to hodlers. Uh, but we don't quite have the option yet of, uh, of uh, having Jameson come swinging in from a helicopter. Well, that's a pretty good alternative. A one, one click, uh, emergency button sounds like a, a you know, a good, uh, good start. Yep. Okay. Great, Jeremy. Really appreciate the insight there. And you know, if anyone wants to learn more about Casa and how to like manage their private keys, especially in a multi-sig setup, where would you rec recommend them going? Sure. So again, you can Google the Casa Wealth Security Protocol. Uh, that document it lays out everything, all the details of the security mod model, everything we've built, uh, even the things that we decided not to build. There's a lot that we actually thought, you know, would, would cause major problems and put customers at more risk. So we decided not to build certain things. We included those two. Uh, you can go to the website, keys.casa, and learn more there. Or you can email us directly, and we're happy to walk you through kind of full overviews for, for free, you know, no obligation there, uh, but we do this all the time. It's just email membership at team.casa, and we can answer questions. Throw us your hardest uh, OPSEC questions, your hardest kind of challenge questions. You know, we, we've heard the craziest stories as to kind of the setups that people have or the security concerns they have, and we take them very seriously because we do think that we're dealing with, uh, you know, with, with Bitcoin at $10,000, uh, roughly $10,000 right now, if it gets to a hundred thousand or a million or even more, right? Like we're dealing with a lot of money and this could be billions of dollars in, in Bitcoin for some people one day. So no, no crazy story or no crazy security threat is, uh, is kind of left out. We're happy to address everything. Send us your questions, send us your emails. Uh, and we're, uh, we're happy to answer and try happy to help. Well, Jeremy, really appreciate the insight. And, uh, you know, this episode is about, this episode is about hardcore hodling and it's great awesome. to hear how you guys think through it. Awesome. Thanks for having us on Dan. Bye. Cheers. Dan, uh, um, to summarize it all, what do you use? What's your uh, uh, favorite method of hardcore hodling uh, and what should our viewers take, uh, take away with them? That's a good question and I would recommend for most Bitcoiners, be very careful who you tell, uh, <laughs> be very careful uh, who you tell how you've, how you've hodled your coins. Uh, nobody's you know, listening, Dan. And... It's me you and, me, you and uh, the fishes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you, me and all of crypto Twitter. <laughs> Um, you know, there's, I think when you talk about it with family and friends, be very careful about how you talk about it. But the way I look at it, and I've kind of mentioned this before, trusting people to manage your private key. If, if you're not very comfortable with what I've shown you today, then maybe you should trust someone else to manage your private key. Someone very reputable who's never gotten hacked before. Kraken, of course, is one of those companies. They've been around since 2011. But of course, in the spirit of crypto, you should try to manage your own private key or do a setup like the Casa multi-sig setup where you're not necessarily trusting one company with your private key, you're trusting many different parties and the probability of them all colluding together is low. So I think the way that I look at it personally is that it's on a spectrum. So I've got X amount, you know, just on the metallic backup. So there is no treasure or ledger associated with it any, anymore. It only exists on that titanium. And so that's pretty hardcore because if I lose that, then I lose all my coins. And then I've got, you know, of course, the hardware wallet setups with the backups. So that's a stage in between. Um, I also have, um, I'm a Casa Platinum member. So I have the Casa Multisig service. And then finally, you know, there are uh, centralized or some services that manage my private key like BlockFi that I trust. So there's a whole spectrum and I think it shouldn't be binary. It shouldn't be all or one. It should be an X percentage of coins allocated between the different setups that you find most secure. Um, you know, this doesn't get too expensive. I think the, you know, the Trezor and Ledger plus the Titanium backup you know, that all in is maybe under $300, three, $400. Uh, it gets a little expensive with the cost of premium membership, which is around 1800. So that that's only for people who have a lot of coins. Um, so I think that one's a little bit cost prohibitive, 
they do have a two out of three multi-sig that's three hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. so the casa does have a tiered uh different different tiers of service that enable you to kind of find the best value for your money all right uh that all makes sense it's a, a very educational segment today with uh, uh dan held uh viewers uh should probably uh, take that last bit of advice. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And of course, we can't finish. Not your keys, not your crypto. Hold on to those. Uh, Till next time, Dan, thank you very much. Those of you at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more blockchain and cryptocurrency news. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter. <laughs>